what's up my beautiful butterflies it is the awakened butterfly and i am here with a very important video that i would like to share with you guys today please stay for the entire video if you enjoy the content don't hesitate to like and subscribe to my channel i hope everyone is doing well taking care of themselves mentally physically and spiritually um like i said before in a few of my videos i love reading the comments I love when you guys uh, reply back to my videos. I love when you guys communi communicate with each other in the um, comment section. And um, I was reading one of my messages the other day from one of my lovely supporters. And they mentioned that um, Cookie threw me off from talking about um, my situation with homelessness. So... Since I'm not distracted by Cookie today, well, fully distracted, she's right here. It's like every time I get ready to do a video, she can sense it and she'll, you know, come and lay up on me. She's very spoiled. But anyway, guys, no distractions today. Um, I decided to do a video about homelessness and gang stalking. And, um... As I mentioned before in my previous video, I um, was homeless twice in a year, um, twice last year. And um, the way things went down, you can tell that once you sit back and think about it, that things were planned and orchestrated. And I have a funny feeling of who, who was behind some of these things. And I really do feel like it was a family member that was behind some of these things, someone that is very well someone that is supposed to be very close to me and should not even participate in this type of harassment but unfortunately i feel that they did and i want to spread the more awareness to you guys so you can you know understand more of what's going on uh, with this type of harassment um all right guys hold on for one second hold on Okay, I'm back. No more distractions, guys, I promise. Okay, um, the first thing I'm going to do is discuss some of the main goals um, for gang stalking. And we all know that it's to silence you, to destroy your reputation and your credibility, to drive you to believe that you are mentally ill, and to also persuade others that you are as well. Um, their spirits can also sense your present or future awakening. And it scares them because like I said, this is a spiritual warfare and you the same way you have gifts and you're in a positive light and, and, and you know you're trying to maintain that light. There's also people who have gifts as well as yourself and they're not using them for the right reason. So um, let's say if you have the gift of discernment and you use it to make the right decisions for yourself and for others the people around you um someone that doesn't that doesn't have that type of mentality they're more of a dark spirit they would use their gift of discernment to um to seek out people that they felt they could prey on everything is a strategy um you having a spiritual awakening scares these people and it, it gives them a motive to destroy you. That would be their reason. And um, no one is gang stalked for no reason. There's something about you that draws these people to you. They can see your light. And some people are eager to dim your light in any way possible. Especially if they feel that you know your light will spread on others. And it will wake some people up and spread awareness. That's their biggest fear. Many lengths are taken in order uh, to disposition you, one of which is to attack you along with your sanity. Is I'm sorry, is to attack your sanity along with your finances. Um, they feel that there are, you know, many ways that they can affect you, but they feel that the worst ways to affect you is your sanity, your mental health, and your finances because they feel that. 
Do you guys see that fly? My window was open earlier. I apologize for that. Um, they feel that if they can um, hold you down financially, you can't move forward and provide for yourself or your family. Um, you will be... They feel that you would have to turn to the people that possible harassers for help and that can cause more harassment. Um, tampering with finances is to put you in an uncompromising situation as far as providing food, clothing, and shelter for you and your family. Um, especially if you're, you know, and they also, um, let's say for instance, um, you're especially attacked if, you're, if you have children. Uh, let's say, for instance, if you are targeted and you have children, they may do things to try and um, mess with your finances to say that you're an unfit parent, that you're not um, financially or men mentally stable enough to care for your children. Um, they may also put strains on your ability to provide. This tactic is especially for people that is a part of an elite or Freemasonry members who are going through custody battles. Um, if they are part of these organizations and they're going through custody battles, they can make all types of things happen uh, to the other parent in order to make it look like they're not um, capable of taking care of their children. And that's not always the case at all. Um, Non-members of elites or Freemasonry also would use witchcraft in um, custody battles in order to win and if people have to do these things nine times out of ten they're not the parent that the children need to be with honestly so how are your finances affected um your place of employment gangs oh, there's that fly again it's so annoying gang stalking harassment harassing you on your job to the point where you feel like you know quitting or lashing out Workplace bullying, having people to make your job hard for you, harassing you, um, bullying, bullying you, uh, making you not want to come to work, making your job harder, um, being fired possibly for no reason at all. Um, it's usually called, and if they did have a reason, it could be due to their harassment, making you lash out against them, which, you know, pushing you to the edge. And once you do lash out, they say that um, you're causing a hostile work environment and that gives them a reason to fire you. Um, overworking and underpaying you, not wanting to give you a raise, not wanting to give you the pay that you deserve. Um, if these people fire you, it can push you to get unemployment compensation, depending on the government for um, your financial stability in order to provide for you and your family this is allowing them to disperse a specific amount of money to you each week unlike a job where you could get possible overtime or raise this is also helping them keep tabs on how you use your unemployment card where you spend it how you spend it uh, this also could cause further gang stalking on down the line not could it it's going to um Community extortion. This is what um, I named this situation because I've experienced this and I've also experienced other people going through this and it, it upsets me so bad. And this is where people, friends, etc. ask you for money and get mad when you don't have the money to give and they harass you tremendously for it. Um, it seems I've been in situations where People have seen me in a in messed up situation trying to get back on my feet. And they put you down when you don't have a job. And as soon as you get a job, before you can even get your first or second paycheck, people are already putting priority on your money. They could have maybe bought you a meal when you didn't have the funds to get your own food. It, and they're bringing it up because they bought you that one meal or because they did something for you when they saw you in a situation and they should have done it out of the kindness of their heart. But sometimes people do these things to um, hold something over your head to always make you feel like you owe them something to 
it's a way of extorting you and a lot of people wouldn't realize that but let's face it a meal you know um i would give anyone a meal for free i would never charge anyone for a meal now i do make a living from um catering at this point because i love to cook and it's not um it's not a it's something that i do for local jobs in my area i provide breakfast and lunch and i do get paid for it because i use my funds for it and you know i buy the food and i cook it and you know provide it for the workers so um if anyone i do provide credit for my customers if they don't have it right then they can pay me when they get paid my prices aren't outrageous um hmm um you know that's that's a different story too and, and also if someone needed food if they didn't have money i would not charge anyone for food if i seen someone that was homeless and needed food i would most definitely go in my home and make them a good meal and give it to them because it's a blessing i even have food to provide for myself let alone someone else it's a blessing so i would always do that um you would also notice that the prices around you are going up food gas and other necessities it just seems like out of nowhere things are getting higher in your community where you just went to the store one week and something was a dollar fifty now it's two dollars or two fifty two twenty it's like things are just going up um at the time this is going up people are still asking you for money trying to make you feel obligated you're giving them money trying to help them and it's like nothing is enough at this time you have a sudden rent increase you're being harassed by your landlord over a decision that they made all of a sudden um you may have a slight increase in some of your bills when you know that you've maintained your lights and your water but it seems slightly higher than usual um your cable company is charging you for a feature that you didn't ask for you know just things of, of that nature unexpected things just trying to keep you down and um you know keep you from moving forward and to keep someone down financially is very very sickening to me to not want to see anyone else able to provide for themselves and their family is so unethical to me i that's nurt i'm a nurturing person and i don't even have to know you just to know that people are taken care of it means so much to me and when someone comes to my home you know whenever i have had a guest in my home I asked them, are they hungry? Do they need anything to drink? Are they okay? Um, you know, if they're looking like they may need someone to talk to, I will ask them, do you need someone to talk to? Um, and you know, if not, I'm here whenever you feel like you need someone to talk to. I've always tried to be a nice and considerate person. Oh my God, guys, I know I said no more distractions, but hold on, I gotta get my charger before I tell this story. coming guys all right i am back i hope this part works here all right guys we're good now okay let me get myself ready for this story because believe it or not, guys, I'm so thankful for you guys. I've been, you know, I've I've been wanting to talk to someone about this. And I tried to talk to certain members of my family about it when I came back in contact, but it didn't really seem like it mattered to them. So I know that's all a part of the um organized harassment that I'm experiencing. So let's get right into it. Okay, so um 
in 2018 of November, my fiance and I moved into a hotel suite and we paid $160 a week. It came with a kitchenette, um, the bedroom area, it had the, um, the, the little dining area, the bathroom, the shower. It was like a little mini apartment. And um, it also had a laundry facility, um, you know, on the, um, what am I trying to say, guys? Hold on, guys. Okay, it had a laundromat in the in the building. So it was a blessing. It was also close to a lot of stores, gas stations, Walmart, uh, Planet Fitness. It was very convenient. Um, at the time when I was eating um, meat, certain food, fast foods, there were a lot of convenient restaurants around, Burger King, Taco Bell, um, things like that. So me being the humble person that I am, I looked at that as a blessing. You know, the, the place was really, the suite was really clean. They kept it up. They did monthly inspections. Um, I, I could not complain about it, but, um, we seen it as a point to save money and try and get some things straightened out where we can move into something else. Well, to us, it was an, a blessing and a roof over our head. To everyone else, we were homeless. And since we weren't living in an apartment paying rent, but living in a suite paying rent, we were homeless. I, and you know, I didn't get that, you know. And people used to come around and throw shots. It was family members, some people that claimed to be our friends, people that we used to um, work with a co-worker used to come by all the time and you know tease us about still living in our hotel or whatever our suite but at the same time the rent that we were paying were probably was probably more than some of these people were paying where they were living at and, and that's another thing that people talked about if it wasn't us living there it was how much we were paying to live there and we were them not knowing and you know us trying to tell them that we were trying to get some things straightened out so we can actually move and it was hard to find some uh, find places because honestly, our credit wasn't the best. And if your credit's not the best, things are limited. So you have to, you know, find what what works for you. And instead of our family supporting us behind that decision, a lot of our friends and family they did make fun of it. Um, they said some very discouraging things. And it used to really hurt me. I really used to, you know, I used to feel very um, discouraged by it. And I used to pray, you know, every day and night that we would get an apartment, that we would find, you know, a bigger place to live. And I just... When, when I'm in a situation, when I'm at my worst, I always look at how people treat me, how the people around me treat me. When I'm at my worst, I look at how they treat me when I'm at my best. And I always see a big difference there. And I remember that one summer, it was 2019, no, 2020, it was two years ago. Um, we were at a family member's house and everyone was in the backyard and one of the family member's girlfriend made a statement about living in a hotel. And I knew this was gang stalking. I knew that they were targeting us and I used to let it get me upset and I used to tell my fiance that I'm not going back around, you know, the negativity anymore. I don't want to hear it. Um, I'm tired of people making fun of our living situation. And we kept our place very clean, very neat. You know, we had everything that we needed. It just didn't meet up to everyone else's expectations because it wasn't. And I started looking at things like, okay, these people are not positive. So why do they want to be around us anyway? And I started to realize that 
you know, our apartment, our suite was small and maybe it wasn't enough room for them to come and do what they wanted to do. And that was them, our life and, you know, take away our peace. And I just started looking at it that way. And um, out of nowhere, guys, I would say towards the end of 2020 going into 2021, towards the end, um, that fall, our, our rent went up extremely. It was just too much. And um, instead of them telling us about the rent increase, they just did a rent increase without telling us. And... The main um, manager, uh, suite manager, was out of town. So the person that was there filling in, they never told us about the increase. They were just charging us. So it just messed our rent up all together. Um, they didn't want to reimburse us for the money that they overcharged us for. Um, there was a little harassment there. Like we had never missed a payment, but it seemed like once we were trying to pay back that increase that they just slapped on us they just kept calling like you know we would just have made a payment that week and then they'll be calling like six days later like you know do, are you gonna have something this week it started to turn into harassment and i started to get very very stressed out and i started it got to the point where i started meditating twice a day i started making my fiance meditate i started uh, writing down manifestations uh, trying to get into a new, you know, praying that we get into a new apartment, just all kinds of things. Because I'm like, if we're going to be paying this money, we need to be in something a little bigger. So I would say maybe this was so ironic. Um, I would say maybe a few months later, we saw the staff of the suite in the laundry room having like a little private meeting we were we were going to wash clothes and it wasn't the, the manager it was the employees the maintenance person the housekeeper two maintenance people and a housekeeper and they were talking about insurance and things of that like that and their behavior was very weird they were saying something about some money or something like that well guys later on that night we woke up out of our sleep the the whole building was on fire. People were jumping over the building. People were yelling, crying, saying, please, please get out of there. There's a fire. There's a fire. Guys, we could not grab anything. We just had to run out of there with what we had on. I, I had my bank card put up in the closet and I had a $100 bill in the drawer. I grabbed a $100 bill, whatever I could grab. And I just left the card in the closet. I didn't try to run back for it. I just ran downstairs um, with no socks and shoes on. And it, I had on these shorts. I, it was cold outside. It was in February. And I remember I was getting so nervous because my fiance was taking longer and longer trying to grab more of his things. And I said, just drop it. Just drop it. For, because you can see the fire coming. I mean, it was bad. And um, I just... I just can remember thinking like that we're already living in a hotel and now it's on fire. We're about to lose everything on top of that. Money, everything, like what's going to happen? And the fire burnt all the way to our apartment and it, it stopped right there at the neighbor's apartment. That had to have been God because even though our clothes were, it was smoke damage, we were still able to get our things out of there. Uh, we couldn't get our things out of there until four days later. We had to just leave and go somewhere. Um, we, we had to stand outside until like 5 a.m. until the fire stopped. Five or six. It started around one. And Red Cross... Um, was supposed to have been helping people, but they only can help you if your place actually got damaged. But our building was damaged, the lights, electricity, the water, so we weren't able to stay in it. So we were still homeless, but they said since our building didn't catch fire that they couldn't, I mean that our room didn't actually catch fire, they said the smoke damage wasn't enough. So we were like, okay, but this building, we still can't live here. Like they told us we can't stay here because the lights and water's not working. Everything's messed up. So we went to a 
hotel where we paid seventy four dollars a night. And this is the money that we had saved up. So I'm like, once this is gone, we, I mean, we're spending all of our money. We get, you know, we're eating every day. We're not able to cook food because we're actually in a real hotel now instead of a suite with no stove. And um, we went to a community center and got help with our rent for a week, one week. And after that, we were on our own. And out of nowhere, guys, in that hotel, we were at Days and I'll never forget it. Within that week that the community center paid for us being there, I got my stimulus check. So that helped us a lot. And then my unemployment um, has started to kick back in with my stimulus check because, oh my God, guys, the job that I was working at that time, the lady told me that I she could no longer um, have me come in for that first day of work because she couldn't find anyone to train me. Like, it made my stomach sink in. It was really crazy. I went through so much orientation for a caregiver position. Um... It was really weird what happened with that situation as well. So I ended up getting uh, going through a court case with them. And I ended up getting granted unemployment for it. She was found in the wrong in the situation. And um, my fiance was getting it as well because he got laid off during the pandemic. So we moved into an apartment. Now, it was either moving to this apartment and pay every week. Or keep staying in this hotel paying $80 a night. We chose the apartment. Well, when we moved in, it was crazy because the same, the landlord ended up being the fire, one of the firefighters that put out the fire where we lived. Isn't that crazy, guys? Like, that is so ironic to me. And, um... I saw him putting the fire. He was actually someone that got, I don't know how he hurt his leg, but my fiance said, oh my God, I think he hurt his leg. He was limping. That's how I remember that it was him. So I'm like, he's here now. And it's like when he saw me, the first thing he said was, oh, it's you guys. And I didn't, he never saw us. He, we were standing on the side when they were putting the fire out. We saw, we were looking at them. They, they were too busy. They had a lot going on to pay attention to anyone around. So that kind of, was ironic and um once we got into the apartment a month or two later they immediately sold the place to some very mean and nasty landlords they upped the rent on us um they started charging for crazy things saying that if you if you have anything outside of your door um they will charge you extra on your rent for it and i had a grill like one of those mini grills that comes to your ankle and uh we would make uh impossible plant-based burgers on those sometimes so it wasn't too much to clean on the grill so when um it was outside it was just to cool off and it, now i have to bring it back in the kitchen because they said we couldn't sit anything outside although i didn't want to i didn't believe in bringing a grill inside of the kitchen i was like i have to follow the rules so one sunday we made burgers and I forgot to bring it back in. So that Monday morning, I see someone carrying my grill away. And I walk outside. And as soon as I open the door, I see something on my door saying that um, we're going to take your grill and hold it in our office. And if you don't come and get it in 30, within 30 days and pay this $20 fine, we're going to throw it away. So I immediately went into the office and I asked the lady, I said, did you just come and get my grill, ma'am? And she said, yes. I said, why? She said, because I just started working here and that was instructions from the landlord. I was like, okay. So I was like, can I get it back? She was like, sure. So I got my grill back and um, I said, you know, the new landlord has been really hard on you know us lately and we're really just trying to be good tenants and do the right thing. And I said, I apologize for having the grill outside so she said well i think she said you still have to pay the fine so at this point now my fiance is upset saying so they're gonna 
raise the rent and give us a fine for the grill when you went right back and got it when you saw her taking it. At this point, we considered it being harassment. Um, the next thing you know, I'm standing outside and this is about a week later. I'm standing outside and I'm talking to one of the neighbors because she was um, just letting me know she was about to move or something like that. And out of nowhere, the new office manager walks up and hands me a letter. But she has her husband with her. And she said, um, and he, he has on a vest. Like, I don't know, maybe he worked for the police or something. I don't know. And I was wondering why she had him with her. And she said, uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is my husband. And I'm like, why did she have him with her? Like, I was going to cause a problem when she, you know, gave me the paper I'm not that type of person and that's another thing they will do guys they will try to that's another part of the predatory gang stalking they will try to make you think they will try to make others think that you're a very hostile person and they will also try to make you think you're a hostile person and treat you as such when all you want is to be treated um, fairly and you don't want to be harassed so the letter was an eviction notice saying that I had to leave uh, they didn't give me a reason a legitimate reason for it um, I kept asking her, is there anything that we can do to fix the situation, whatever it was? And she was saying, no, I'm just, um, just decided not to rent to you guys anymore because your lease is up. And I, we were on a six month lease, but before our lease was up, they were trying to, um, act like our lease was July 24th when it was really in October, but me not looking just so excited to move in an apartment um the lease was pre-printed already for um july but the date what saved us was signed for march which was the actual date that we moved in which means six months later would be september not july so um guys we didn't have hardly any money we had to hurry up and move uh we moved into another hotel where now we're paying every week again once again um it's a lot more than the suite because it's a regular hotel where you usually would pay by the day so it's not a, a rated amount um and that's in this situation is what led up to my other video i made where i said um oh my god what's the title of it well, I was talking about all up to the point where we had to leave, were, was experiencing harassment from these landlords. Um, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned the fire. I don't think I did. But the apartment after the fire to where we are now. And that leads up to where we are now. And I, I pray so hard, you know, and so far, thank God, we haven't had any problems where we are now. Our landlords, you know, she's a cool person. Our rent is reasonable and... You know, we might have a little people stand stand around and stare at us, or I might have seen someone stand standing outside of my window, like you know, regular gang stalking things. But um, people looking at you, and then when you turn around, they're in their phone, just weird sometimes. But um, guys, I made this video to let you know that always pay attention to how people treat you when you're at your worst in your life. Um, it will let you know if they have your best interest at heart or not. Um, always pay attention and watch out for people who try to strip you financially. They feel that, you know, stripping you financially will hit you really with a double whammy. They feel like they don't even have to really tamper with your mental that much if they hit you with the financial because they feel like it's going to tumble everything down for you. And with all of that stress from the financial they feel like that's going to affect you mentally anyway. Um, so this is what you do, guys. If there's anything that you feel that you're good at, your own personal talents that you feel that you can make money off of to work for yourself, that's what I do. I work for myself. Um, you know, I'm good at cooking, so that's what I do. And when I'm... When I'm actually, um, I, I work very hard. I get up every morning at 4 a.m., usually six days a week, but right now it's five days. 
And every job that I've actually went to and clocked in and worked for someone else, I've been harassed, I've been bullied, I've been severely you know mistreated i've had people follow me home it's just a lot of weird things you know a lot of um it's weird you know how your light attracts certain people they can be good or bad um, you can have people that can see your light shine so bright that they're attracted to you just so they can bring darkness into your life and I just want anyone out there that's, if you're homeless and you're going through something, just know that it's going to get better and always look for the signs. Because when I, the last hotel that we were just living in before we moved here, I remember I kept getting angel feathers in different places and, um, I started working, actually working at a hotel next door to where we were living. I did a story time on that as well. It's called um, Workplace Harassment or Gang Stalking or something like that. I'm also going to do a video uh, soon about workplace bullying. But it's like when you, when you try and do better for your life, people try and bring you down and you notice it you actually notice it and a lot of the times they're from people that we love and you don't want to place that label on them i'm sorry it is what it is if it's someone in your family that wasn't trying to support you when you were down when you when you get on your feet don't give them your energy okay um i did get a part-time job and um, well full to part-time part-time to full-time until i was able to work on my own and i did live in that hotel until i was able to get an apartment and, and you know people said things i didn't care because they were still blessings to me because i know my journey with god and i know the things that he said to me and where he led me i knew the in the outcome so all those people that doubt me about my situation I try not to have contact with them anymore because it made me realize that they did not have my best interest at heart. So I hope this video really helps someone. And write down manifestations. It really helps. Whatever you're going through in your life, write down the manifestations that you would like to, to happen. And write them down like don't say I want this to happen write them down like they've already happened in your life and pray on it and you will see a big magical outcome it's it's called a miracle and I hope this video helped someone I love you guys so much and me being humble is what got me through and what's still getting me through all of these things right now in my connection with God overall so i feel like i've rambled on enough i hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel continue to take care of yourselves mentally physically and spiritually and until my next video guys peace and love